Let's look at verse number one here in chapter number two. The Bible says, And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Now, I'm going to pause right here and just point out there's a few places in the Bible that I think it's very possible. I'm not saying 100% for sure, but I think it's possible that where the Bible says an angel of the Lord or the angel of the Lord could be an Old Testament reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the word angel, oftentimes when people think of an angel today, you think of like a creature or being with wings, or you think of like Michael the archangel, or things like that. There are beings that God created that you can call an angel. That are, that are heavenly creatures or heavenly beings. But the word angel itself literally means messenger. And oftentimes God even uses, you know, man to be messengers that can be angels delivering a message to somebody. So just because you see the word angel in scripture, first of all, doesn't mean that it's talking about necessarily some special heavenly creature that you would think of, that people commonly think of to be an angel. Because a word means to be a messenger, and that's what they're going to do, is to, is to give a message. But I also think that occasionally in Scripture, you could find an angel being referred to as Jesus Christ himself being that messenger. Of course, in the Old Testament, he's not known as Jesus Christ, but we know that there are Old Testament appearances of Jesus Christ. Now, the reason why I think this might be one of those places is because if you look at this, it says an angel, an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochum and said, I made you to go up out of Egypt and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. So it's all speaking like in the first person, like, hey, I'm, I brought you up out of Egypt. I made this promise. I made this covenant and I'm not going to break that covenant with you. So normally when pe you know, people can speak in the first person like that, but normally they'll say, thus saith the Lord. Right. You see Isaiah, Jeremiah, they'll say, hey, thus saith the Lord, I knew, you know, I brought you up out of Egypt. But here we don't have that same reference. We don't we don't have them quoting and saying, hey, this is what God said. So for that, re for that reason is one of the reasons why I think that this could very easily be talking about Jesus appearing to them just in the Old Testament, coming to them. And, uh, you know, we see Melchizedek as a picture of Jesus Christ, but the Bible says he was without mother, without father, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. It, that's obviously talking about deity. That's God. That's talking about uh, the human, the incarnate version of God, which is Jesus Christ. And there's other references. I'm not going to go into all the other references in the Old Testament that we can see that, but I think this is another one of those places. And he says here in, in verse number two, and ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Now, if you remember the story, the story is uh, from the book of Joshua, of course, where the, the, oh, which people was it? The Ammonites. I don't remember which group of people it was offhand right now. But they came down and, and they, were, they were feigning to be someone else. They were, they were pretending to be people from a far off land. Because, what was it? Gibeonites. The Gibeonites. The Gibeonites came and they said, you know, like, hey, we're from, we're from really far away. And they said, see, look at our bread and look at our bottles of wine. Look at, you know, look at this stuff is really old. And they were just dressed up in costumes to make it look like. They came from a really far place away and they're just like, we heard about the Lord and, you know, we want to make a pact with you. We want, we want to make a non-aggression pact, right? We're going to be there for you. We're going to, we're going to join the league together. And uh, at first, the children of Israel, Joshua was just like, well, wait, where are you guys from? You know, they're starting to question them. But then they end up making the deal with them and uh, they didn't do enough diligent search. They didn't go and ask the Lord, hey, should we make a, a deal with these guys? Should we make a league with them? And I'm not going to re-preach that sermon. You could go back and listen in the book of Joshua. I, I covered a lot of details on that. And then as a result, because they made that league with them, they made an oath, they made a vow. They decided, well, we can't go back on that. We swear before the Lord that we're not going to harm these people. We're not going to hurt them. So 
it was more important to keep their word than it was at that point to, to wipe them out as God had originally commanded them to do. Because what God told them to do is you're supposed to go in and destroy the Canaanites, destroy the people of the land, and they're not supposed to leave any living. And again, that's a whole, I've already gone into why they had to destroy everybody. But I mean, it just, it should at least go to show you how wicked those people were when God was bringing his judgment upon them. And you read the book of Leviticus 18 through 20, and you'll see exactly why God wanted to just exterminate everybody out of the land because it had just gotten so bad. Similar to the way he did with the flood and Noah. The, the things had gotten so bad in the world at that time, people had gotten so wicked that God just said, well, here's my solution to that. I'm going to pour out my wrath and send a flood. and I'm going to save Noah and his family. And everyone else is going to get destroyed. It had gotten so bad in Sodom and Gomorrah that God just rained fire and brimstone down and says, you know what, there's no more hope for this place. We're just going to burn it down. We're done with it. And the Canaanites were in a similar position. They're just, they, they become reprobate as a, as a nation. And God brought his judgment upon them by using the children of Israel to come in and simultaneously was able to then give them an inheritance and give them a promised land that he had promised to Abraham. So uh, God was able to perform many tasks simultaneously because he's God and able to, to make those things work out. So.